Welcome to the Best Business Podcast, the podcast for established marketers, entrepreneurs, and CEOs, the ones who want to join me in my mission to create 200 new multimillionaires who solve world problems with entrepreneurship. If that's you, then this podcast was created to give you access to the tools, training, strategies, and tactics you need to achieve multiple seven-figure profits as soon as possible. This world needs the best business you can build, so please get ready, open your mind, believe you can do this, and let's build a better world together for future generations. Hello, everyone, and welcome. Thank you for joining us today. I am Daryl Urbanski, your host as always, and today we're joined by a very special guest. We've got Chris Brisson. He is... Um, a friend and a mentor and someone that can provide a lot of value to us. I'm, I'm really excited about this interview. Uh, Chris started his first company out of college. He built it for three years, sold it in 2005. In 2013, he was Infusionsoft's Marketer of the Year, which is not an easy thing to, to achieve. Um, he's got two automated internet uh, businesses, he, plus a consulting company that's responsible for generating over a million dollars in sales for his clients. Um, he's a close friend, he's wicked smart, and he's a family man. Um, he's someone who really cares about people, helping out, and relationships. He's someone I feel very, very appreciative for being able to call on and to talk to. And uh, again, it's an honor to be able to have a conversation with him and, and, and bring you guys into the fold today. So, Chris, thank you so much for joining us today. How are you doing? I'm good, man. I'm actually uh, really excited to uh, to be on here. And thanks for thanks for the invitation. Hopefully, we can give some good value to everyone on the call. Yeah. Well, I just whenever whenever I've got a problem or um, like you're just one of the top 10 that I turn to. And so again, if I'm sincere in my mission about wanting to help create 200 new multimillionaires, I know I want to have the best, the best on the call. And you know, you obviously fit into that mold. So your marketing stuff is always on point. It's always sharp. It's always well done. And I love the way you look at the business world as well. You've got a lot of profound insights. You've read a lot of the great books. Um, so I just think that, um, I just, yeah, it's, you are the average of the f- five people you spend the most time with. And so you're definitely someone I want to surround myself with more often. Now it wasn't, you weren't always, um, where you are now. So what happened back in the day? How did you even get started in all this? Uh, well, first off, man, thanks for, for the kind words. I, I really appreciate it. Um, <clears throat> yeah. So I guess the real quick story is I kind of accidentally fell into uh, business. Um, actually, I come from an entrepreneurship family. My dad's always started uh, companies, mostly restaurants, and that sort of thing. And so just growing up, I always had kind of, you know, the uh, seeing what it's like to, to, uh, to be an entrepreneur. And uh, I just always kind of you know, always knew that's what I wanted to do. And my dad always said, oh, don't work for anybody. <laughs> so, mm-hmm. All right. I guess, I guess I'm going to do that. So, um, but <laughs> I was, uh, I can thank the fast and the furious because when I was uh, 18 years old, um, uh, I was just going off to college and I, um, like any 18 year old kid back in the fast and furious days, 2001, 2000, <laughs> wanted to, uh, quote unquote, pimp the ride. And I wanted to get, (laughs) I wanted to get wheels for my car. Uh, I got a Mustang and I wanted to get rims, uh, like any other kid would. So, you know, come to find out, I went to look for these wheels and they were like $2,000 just for the rims. And I didn't have any money. I was working at Applebee's at the time. And, um, as a waiter in the summer here in Florida and, uh, you don't make a lot of money. So needless to say, I was like, man, how can I figure out a better way, a cheaper way to get these wheels? And so I went on, I found a distributor in Miami, ended up calling them up and playing as if, because they only dealt with wholesale, they didn't do retail. Mm. So I couldn't go there and buy them. But I uh, I kind of sneakily called them and said, hey, this is Chris with Boca Tint and Tunes. Uh, I've got a customer that wants the you know seventeen by nine, you know one six eight, you know polished whatever <laughs> wheels. So I was like, cool. He's like, yeah, come on down. It's uh, four hundred and sixty eight bucks. And I'm like, what? Holy crap! So I came down with cash, and the guy kind of knew. He's like, all right, this kid just wants my rims. So ended up uh, bringing cash down there, got the wheels, and literally that day put them on the car. I put used tires on there because I couldn't afford new ones. <laughs> And uh, next day, I literally drove to Florida State University uh, in Tallahassee and uh, had my wheels. And fast forward two years into Florida State, dead broke, uh, didn't have any money, could barely pay my $250, $300 rent. Mm. 
and I needed money. And my buddy's like, dude, why don't you sell your rims? And I said, oh, how would I, where would I sell them? He's like, oh, you got to check out eBay. So I look out on eBay and come to find out the same wheels that I bought for $468, these guys were selling the wheels for $900. Mm. So I was like, holy shit, um, this is a business. And yeah. so um, <laughs> called my dad. I'm like, dad, what do I need to do? He's like, oh, you got to get a business license. You got to you know, do this, all this stuff. And uh, – Penske Auto, uh, Kmart, they had a, like a, a, an extension of Kmart, which they did the oil changes on. So they were going out of business and basically um, uh, they had an auction. They were auctioning off all the equipment. And so I bought like equipment. I borrowed maybe a thousand bucks from my dad and bought like a wheel changer and tire balancer and all this stuff and uh, had a company and uh, just started, you know, in the summer I would do, you know, sell the rims and tires and then. Anyhow, uh, fast forward through college, would broker tire deals and sell tires to people uh, awesome. on the internet. Ended up selling the company in 2005, but um, it didn't come with its challenges. You know, I got broken into, and these dudes stole like three or four thousand dollars worth of inventory. Whoa. Fraud was rampant, and uh, you know, you're shipping huge rims and tires across the country right. and uh you know if it gets scratched the customer's not happy so you got to ship it back and all this stuff so anyhow thank god i sold the business learned a lot and vowed never again to go into sell physical stuff mm. uh, especially heavy things and right. uh that's where i just kind of discovered hey how do you sell how do you, you know learn like zig ziglar and those guys and and i was like man how do you know i learned about direct mail and all that sort of stuff, and then jumped into, well, heck, if these guys are doing it in direct mail, somebody's got to be doing it on the internet. <laughs> right, right, right. And, uh, and then just dove into the, the massive rabbit hole of internet marketing and trying to figure that out. So You know, and I love what you just brought up. First of all, I love the lesson that you learned there. Like you jumped into a business and, you know, it was a bit of a grind. And that's similar to my story where, you know, I just felt it was a real grind in the brick and mortar kind of retail scene. Um, but the part that I love is just what, what you said about direct mail, and if you know, and if people are using this direct response thing, you know, on in radio, and television, and you know, and in, in, in the mail and in magazines, it got it must work with the internet. And I, it's funny, I had a conversation um, the other day with someone talking about uh, internet marketing, and they just they they didn't really seem to see it that way. And maybe we can kind of to help um, enlighten some of the listeners. They thought that internet marketing was like a very specialty particular thing, but I, I had to be like, no, man, like the principles uh, that you use in internet marketing are actually really, really, really good if you, like they transfer over to everything else, to direct mail, to radio, like it's it's not very different, it's just the medium is different. What do you, how do you feel about that? I don't want to put words in your mouth, but what do you think? I mean, it's just, it's a medium, right? It's a channel and uh, it's inexpensive, right? At the end of the day, everyone is on their computer, they're connected, right. you know, like I can't wait for us to get past this like looking down era, right? Everyone's right. looking down on their phones right. and, you know, I mean, more people are connected. There's no signs of it slowing down, you know, third world countries, you know, they don't have any food, but they have a cell phone, right? Like yep. more and more people are connected to the internet. So, um, you have to, you know, you have to be on the internet to have any sort of business presence, especially moving into the future. And so, yeah, I mean, it's just a channel, but you know, apparently everyone in the world is on it. And so, like, why would you not uh, put a business online? I think it's just ridiculous if you're not even thinking about it. Right. Well, no, exactly. And I mean, you know, most businesses, and that's something one of your businesses, Call Loop. I mean, you help bridge the gap, and it is, in a lot of ways, it it um, embodies what we're talking about because you you know you just said the internet is one of the most efficient um, or sorry what it's the most it's was it? it's it's cheap it's most inexpensive but it's the least efficient so where like responses like apparently um, you know if you do direct mail if you have a winning online campaign you transfer that into direct mail as long as it performs you should expect a 5 to 20 time ROI like better response with direct mail than you get with online because when you're on a computer there's all sorts of distractions but online is so great and so easy to collect data and information and follow up with them like again using call loop um, you know where do you text them voice broadcast that sort of thing and now like you said it's one channel it's moving into multiple channels um, 
But how did you even figure that out in the beginning? Because, I mean, selling tires, how did you were just selling them with eBay? How are you, you were directing me, like, how are you, I just want to, I want to figure out, like, <clears throat> how you progressed in understanding marketing and, and, you know, and just developing that marketing prowess. Because a lot of people, they don't develop that skill. And um, I feel like that's what really holds a lot of businesses back is that they're like, oh, I've got, like, I had a, a call yesterday, a guy has a piece of software, he may, might want to bring me in. Because he's like, I, you know, he's a programmer and he's built this great tool. Right. But it, you know, like you know, the business graveyard is littered with great products and services that nobody knows about, and this guy is suffering from that. So I just wanted to maybe, could you maybe speak to that a little bit? Your education and your growth and progress. Yeah, you know, I think um, I when I first read, uh, actually, uh, uh, got a little I'm blabbling here. <laughs> <laughs> You're fine, it's okay. When I first got into like discovering marketing it was just kind of like i felt like i uncovered like the ultimate secret like oh my gosh you know <laughs> i remember jay abraham he i bought a tape cassette course on ebay i think it's called how to get from where you are to where you want to be and i remember just listening to this on this old tape deck i had you know to these tapes and you know jay says you know marketing is the ultimate leverage mm. and that always stuck with me it's like yeah, like if you know how to market, I mean, you could do anything, right? Like yep. that, that's it. Like if you can market it, you can sell anything, you can grow any business, but you got to figure out how do you do that. And so when I first like got into marketing, I didn't even know it was marketing. I thought I need to learn how to sell better. So when I had the wheels and all that sort of stuff on eBay, well, first of all, eBay is a marketplace, right? You put shit out there and people search for it and they buy it, right? Like you don't have to drive traffic. You don't have to, you know, do any of that stuff. You just got to have good photos, which is actually one thing I figured out was, you know, I had all these wheels, but everybody was just showing stock pictures that they got from the manufacturer. Mm. So I actually went to the manufacturer, went to the wholesaler for like two days. I sat there with a little thing, like a little black little thing behind the wheel. And I took photos of all of the wheels so that gave me like uh, an advantage mm. for somebody else to buy my stuff versus the other guys using just a manufactured photo. Right. So that was one thing that I learned. And I just kind of learned these little small things to like sell better and like for people to buy my stuff versus somebody else. Right. So um, one of the other dis discoveries I made was, you know, shipping was a big cost. So a lot of my competitors would charge the $130 per shipping. Well, if you bought the wheels and you bought the tires as a package, you know, you had to get it mounted and balanced. If you go to any tire shop, they're going to charge you for mounting and balancing. Uh -huh. So what we did was we offered free shipping, but you had to get mounting and balancing, which was $60. You had to get lug nuts, which was another 50 bucks. So it kind of mm -hmm. mitigated our costs, but we increased our sales, right? Versus right. the guy where people are like, well, I don't want to pay 130 bucks for shipping. These guys offer free shipping. Well, right. the hook is, well, you got to get mounting and balancing. You know, we're not going to ship you eight packages. We're going to ship you four, which is, you know, the wheels and everything already done to your door. So you can just put it on. So that was one of the things. And like just throwing in little gimmicks, like here, get a little like flashlight with your order. You know? Right, right. So like these little goofy little things. But from that, I was like, I need to learn how to sell. I need to learn how to sell better. And um, learning how to quote unquote sell better actually turned into how do I market better you know right? and that's that's a great point to bring up because what is marketing you know what is marketing really and marketing as I understand it and how back in the day you know all the old legends in our industry you know they say um, marketing is salesmanship multiplied yeah and that's exactly what you're saying you're learning how to sell better but when you sell if you're selling one on one there's only so many people you can talk to in a day right but if you learn how to market and you learn how to speak to people as a group and right and create a system that generates interest and get, follows up with people and gets them to that point of buying and especially the way you do business I mean you do all your sales online right or as, with as little personal interaction that you have to do as possible um and it's not in any way to be an impersonal experience. It's to be a smooth user experience that runs 24 hours a day, seven days a week. And that's something, again, that if you're you're the sales rep, then you can't make sales when you're sleeping. You can't make sales when you're working on your business versus in it. And so that's, again, that's uh, that's marketing. It's salesmanship multiplied. So now yeah. how, what do you feel helped you? Like how did you learn how to sell? Um, uh, <clears throat> well, uh, I first learned like Zig Ziglar, but that's very old school door-to-door -door sales and was really intrigued with that. And then I really learned like from Jay Abraham 
a lot of the core core principles of um, sale, you know sales letters, selling through print, you know, just marketing, leverage, joint ventures, uh, and that sort of stuff. And I really got intrigued with um, information products mm. because I really was like, I was just done with. You know, I just, right. there's got to be a better way. I mean, you know, I don't want to sell stuff. I don't want to sell rims and tires. There's got to be a better way, like an easier business to build and grow and scale and mm-hmm. got into information products. And so one of the first uh, attempts uh, was I created a, an info product called Raffle, Raffle Secrets, which was basically a <laughs> raffle ebook that uh, showed nonprofits how to create a raffle. And it was like 27 bucks, you know, but there was a lot of interesting things I learned from that was number one, bad market. Um, All these people were old, you know, they didn't use the internet um, Mm. and, you know, and and it would make a couple hundred bucks a month, but it wasn't like anything that you could really grow with. And so, you know, I learned a lot of just creating an information product, writing an ebook, creating videos, you know, putting up a sales page, working with ClickBank. I just did it. Um. But uh, and from that, we actually created another business. It was called uh, uh, My Revive, which was actually a marketing system for um, a direct sales company, and it was replicated websites. So we sold these websites for twenty bucks a month, and um, and uh, it was a great business. I mean, it was like, wow, this is awesome! Like, we don't have to sell anything. Uh, we're selling air, we're selling websites, and uh, it was a very skillful business. I didn't like the industry; it was MLM, mm-hmm. and. Um, Ended up getting out of that, but it was a great like learning, and it made money, and it actually funded my education in marketing. Right. So I was buying all the courses, and like all, right. you know, just like feeding myself and funding my education on learning marketing, and, uh, and that's when I discovered like Frank Kern and Jeff Walker and Product Launch Formula and Mass Control and like learning all this stuff, um, and then really transitioned into um, I always wanted to do just a big massive product launch. And I knew the process and ended up taking, uh, taking on one client, totally pro bono, didn't pay me anything just because I wanted to learn the process. And, um, you know, he had a, a small internet business, but he was making maybe $1,000 a month. But he had a very good kind of influence in the market. And this is in raw foods. And uh, he was kind of one of the first ones to kind of, I guess, really enter into that market. But mm. this is 2008. And uh, he had a list of like 5,000, but he would always send like his weekly newsletters were just always like, here you come, here's the same thing I sent you last week. <laughs> you know, same HTML email, just kind of like copy paste. There was no personality into it. Mm. So I came on and uh, really just with some really good copywriting um, and just storytelling through email, we rolled um, into a mini kind of uh, save us. Well, uh, I guess I guess you can call it like damaged goods, but like an inventory blowout. So he had a course. He was selling this course. It was thirty-five DVDs. He was printing them. He was burning them. He was putting them in the jewel cases. He was going to Office Depot, like printing the books. And it was just overkill. Like no one's going to go through thirty-five DVDs. So anyhow, um, basically did a small little three-day like uh, sale and I think it was actually kind of the 40 cash machine before even the 40 cash machine came out. Right, which and, is a uh, half-off sale, right? That's yeah, like- yeah, just a half-off sale but it was an inventory thing and I remember like, you know, seeing Yannick Silver do these, hey, look at my closet, it's full of these inventory, you gotta help me. You know? <laughs> and uh, it worked. So we ended up doing like 15 grand, 14 grand in like two days uh, where this guy was like blown away. He, yeah. you know, his best month ever was like fifteen hundred. So, um, and then we rolled that money, and basically, I automated his whole business. So, got a fulfillment center with just dot com. You know, got uh, everything just you know redesigned, turned it into ten DVDs versus thirty five. Right. You know, got the books printed, and so now it's just it was an automated business, and we rolled that into a product launch. And we did one hundred thirty five grand in thirty five days. Like the first day we did like 25 grand. I was like, holy Lord. Yeah, which is Anyhow, awesome. It's the power yeah. of marketing. It's the power of understanding this tool. And like you said, it's it's huge. When you know how to wield it, when you know what you're doing, it, it can it can change lives. Um, I, I, I agree with that hands down. So many people are sitting on a business that they've got a fortune they don't even know of. It's so funny because I just had in the last two weeks, I had two different people I was connected with um, reach out for me for partnership deals where they have sites that are generating over a million 
million, million and a half uh, unique visitors per month, but they're making like three to five grand a month with AdSense. And like, they're like, how do I yeah. monetize this? And it, like the, the sites are so niche, like they're so specific. I'm like, what, what do you mean? Like, I'm like drooling, right? Cause you've got a million and a half unique visitors a month. And you like, that's it. You about know, an opt-in right? form. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You're like, put a pop up. Like, I don't know. Hey, I have an idea. Let's survey them. Let's like, let's just ask them, Hey, what would you buy? Like, you know, it's yeah. Just, um, when I, and I hope people don't like, you know, we're throwing numbers around and all that sort of stuff. And uh, maybe some people feel uncomfortable talking about that. Mm-hmm. But, you know, at the end of the day, like, if you're a business owner, I don't know, we're all in this together. And, right. you know, if we can just share some like insights, like I have nothing to hide. Right. And, um, you know, it's it's what we did. But it, but the, the, it came from like, wanting to learn, like in discovering like, oh, my gosh, this is the way you launch a product. And, and that was from Jeff Walker. Right. And, uh, you know, just learning those like core principles to launching a product, to writing copy, you know, to doing all the components um, and, you know, not having a product of my own. It gave me free reign to run and execute my own quote unquote experiment. And I got paid for it at the end of the day. Right. So for me, it was a huge learning process. And um, it ended up doing another launch for another client where we did, you know, a crazy amount of money in like a week um and uh and from that it was you know the one thing i learned was we were doing teleseminars we were doing email marketing we did a little direct mail like we were using all of these different channels and one of the channels we experimented with was uh, voice broadcasts for like the q a calls and teleseminars that we were doing and i always wanted to automate that you know we would have to kind of export our list from a weber imported into a system and it was just it wasn't automated right so that's kind of where call loop came from we were doing all this stuff and it just there was no easy way to add it to our marketing uh in our our process uh and so that's where kind of call loop came from was how do we automate this you know we're using a weber we're collecting payments from you know paypal and one shopping cart how do we build uh this list so now we can easily send out voice broadcasts and then text messaging came a little bit later No, and again, those are great lessons that, and again, anyone listening, I think they need to pay attention because you've hit some great things. Like you just, first of all, you jumped in, you were volunteering or you were getting involved even at for a fee in other people's projects. And that's one of the best ways to refine skills because when you're doing it yourself, you you know what I mean? It's almost better to to cut your teeth getting involved in someone else's project because you can learn from the mistakes you make with them. Um, and then you've got an ally and you've got a team and you can really, really like it's an easy way to, to shorten the learning curve is just to get involved. In fact, that's one of the things that I used to do all the time. I used to just spend my I remember Friday nights, my friends would be wanting me to go out party and I'd be like, sir, I can't. I got to help my buddy. And I would just be getting involved with anyone I met at a conference and, you know, to keep in touch with like, hey, let's sit down and talk about your business. They're stressed out They're You know, they're not making their bills like, hey, let's talk about it and, f- you know, and figure this out because it's that it's a muscle. And it's yeah. just about exercise and flexing that. And I just love how you talked about you like just jumped in and then you were figuring it out as you went. And then at the same time, you were applying the stuff that you were learning and you were experimenting. And then I love because you're like, yeah, we had a problem. And when I solved the problem, you, that's how call it. Like you built a business out of that. You were helping other people and you came across a problem. And in solving the problem for them and their project, you created your own business, your own offshoot, which you've, you've like you've done really <laughs> you've done awesome with call loop. Um, yeah, thanks, it. man. And it's, it's well, it's and it's a great service. It really is. So, um, again, I just there's so many little life lessons there that I think are so important. Um, <clears throat> yeah, and I think it's um, you know, like you're gonna find these opportunities. Uh, you know, just doing those launches. Well, guess what? I know how to launch products. Mm-hmm. You know, I know how to get affiliates together. I know how to do all of this stuff. And um, in doing it for somebody else, you get that experience because I never worked for a company, right? Mm-hmm. I never got to work with a big corporation or, you know, got to work with, you know, these huge marketers or anything. So I just had to learn. I had to learn by myself and, and doing these things. And so, you know, I would say if I had the opportunity, maybe I would have worked for, um, you know, another marketer and just kind of maybe learned the insides of it. Mm-hmm. Maybe it would have fast tracked me, but I would want to be on a fast paced environment right yep. where i can where i can flex let me flex my muscles yep. um teach me along the way but let me just let me run with it right yep. at least that's the way i work and so yep. 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 um yeah i mean if 
you're wanting to get started, there's a lot of businesses where there's a lot of opportunity and they're just not seeing it. And I think like Jay Abraham said it best is, you know, like the hidden profits inside of your business, um, yep. you know, and every business has all these opportunities that, the, that people just don't see. Yep. And, um, you know, those are opportunities for you to kind of help them out with that stuff. Yep. And that's where things like plugging into a podcast like this and having a, a tight group of people that you can turn to to just go, hey, this is what I'm doing, and just get outside opinion. That's why, or being a part of a mastermind group, that's why that stuff's so valuable is it allows you to see other perspectives and really, really expand on instead of having this tunnel vision of what you're trying to do. And, you know, because a lot of us, you know, we're having such, you know, because implementation, getting it done is always the battle, right? So we get like our yeah. heads down and we get focused on implementing and our, you know, achieving our goals. But oftentimes, like you said, we walk by things that would have made our life much easier, better, faster, stronger if we just had knew, known about them. So, yeah, but guess what, dude? I learned all of that stuff because I had to. Yep. Right. Like I know yes. HTML, I know CSS, I know how to write copy, I know how to, you know, r- create an image in Photoshop. Mm. You know, I know how to do that stuff because I had to. You know, and I think a lot of people just may get stuck with, well, I got to find the right person to do it. And, and yeah, some projects you may, but you got to learn it, right? Yep. I started learning uh, for the, my revive business. I remember paying a designer $2,500, $2, which is literally like the, the only money I had. Right. And after <clears throat> she was done, she was like, okay, well, it'll be $90 per page. I'm like, $90 per page? I'm like, holy crap. <laughs> Yeah. So I'm like, all right, well, let me figure this out, you know, let me learn. <laughs> so I just, I had to learn and, you know, it's going to take time, but yeah. I think just, you know, having those core skills, because there's a lot of stuff that I still jump into and do because, you know, granted, it'll take me five minutes versus, you right. know, finding somebody else to, to do it right. um, just because I know how to do it. And I know, you know, uh, how to do that stuff better than some people do. Yep. Um, at least I'd like to believe or that. How, well, but. How, or how you want it done. No, no, no. I think, yeah, again, exactly. Very valuable. Again, it's the same thing. And I know that we're talking about like product launches and this, but again, it all applies to whatever you're doing. When you talk about doing a product, like an online product launch and sending email, I mean, that's that's no different than if it's in the offline world, right? J- getting joint venture partners online, people to help promote your businesses or strategic alliances. It's the same thing if you've got a product and you need to figure out how to get four or five different distributors on board, or right? Or how to make yeah. friends with all, like how to get in, how to, how to penetrate into an industry and, or, and make those contacts that you need to help you get the exposure you need. It's all the same stuff. It's all very transferable. So you got to do the work, you know, yeah. at the end of the day, I mean, you gotta, you gotta experiment and fail and try and learn, you know, yeah. everything here is going to be a learning experience. Yep. You know, there's been stuff that uh, I've always wanted to create or, you know, there's a million ideas that I think we all have. And, you know, yep. a lot of them, you're not going to, do you know you're not actually going to build it yep, but yep. you know going through the process of figuring out and and uh and seeing if it actually is a real business i've learned a lot about you know valid ideas versus you know uh small time little income ideas well, you can know you, can we can we talk about that cuz in my head i was just what was percolating just just now was wanting to talk about how you differentiate because a lot of people Again, when I had my martial arts school, I didn't realize that I was jumping into a limited market, and I didn't realize that you know that if I really wanted to grow and scale it, I would have to turn to a franchise model and duplicate in multiple cities. I never did that, but when you I just can you maybe speak like, is there a checklist or any criteria or any books you could recommend to help people figure out how to analyze business deals and that, and, and take a look at what they're doing and go, hey, am I running into like a dead end? Am I am I driving a Ferrari on a dead end block? You know, do I have this great product and business, but there's only ten people that want to buy it? Yeah, I think, you know, the first thing is what kind of business do you want to create, right? And what's your expertise in a certain area? So, you know, if you just want to create kind of a passive, you know, $500 a month, I mean, there's a lot of niches that you can do that in, and that's fine, right? Mm-hmm. Um, now, creating, I think Rich Sheffern said it best, and it always stuck with me, is, is, you know, are you creating an income or are you creating a business, right? Like, you can create an income, you can, you know, make five. Hundred five thousand dollars a month, but is that actually a business, right? right? And that's I think the difference between you know affiliate marketing, which really isn't a business, it's an income opportunity, right? right, um, right. And then a business, right? It's like you know, do you want to create a business? And you don't have to create a business where you have to have all these employees. I mean, you know, we're all virtual, and you know, in many respects, it's embarrassing if you walked in my office. Right? <laughs> so, um, you know, you don't have to have a huge operation, and so I think. You know, it's it's first getting clear what do you want to create, right? Because you can create a part-time 
income uh, with you know creating an information product. Um, uh, but to create a business, I think um, you know it's a little bit different. Like, does it have legs? Is it is it in a market that is not going to change or shift? Is it a uh, uh, a product that you know is within my skill set? So I talked. I just got off the phone a little bit ago with a friend of mine. He's creating a T-shirt company, and it's a T-shirt company backed by technology. I mean, it's it's really a technology company, right? Uh, it's just you're selling T-shirts. So you know, I was like, dude, you know, who's on your tech team? Like, who's going to build your product? Because that's what it is. Oh, we have this guy and. He's already kind of flaked out on him, the the programmer, and he's kind of like his hands are tied because he does not know what to do, um, and you know how to build, how to get the product built. That's not really in his core competency. Now he has a lot of money; he can hire the right people, but um, mm. you know he knows how to build a business, but it's not really in his wheelhouse of creating a technology company. Like he knows how to sell, he knows how to market stuff. Well, you know, when your business is dependent on the technology side of stuff and you don't know the technology side of stuff, you got to get somebody that does, right? So, um, you know, the easiest business in the world is information. Um, It's scalable, it's cheap, it's high profit margin. And um, and the key is really just finding that sort of niche. And so, you know, I always say if like you're just getting started, you know, pull a raffle of secrets, you know, like pull some, <laughs> just get started with something. Like you have some skills. So actually, I'll give you a good example. So from that whole raffle secrets thing is um, from college, I made some really bad decisions with credit card debt and credit cards. <laughs> and I knew nothing about credit scores or what that meant later in life, right? right like you make some right. dumb changes, you know, and <laughs> dumb decisions in college. And so, um, so anyhow, I had bad credit and it really hit me was it was like Christmas time and I'm in line at Banana Republic and there's like 50 people, 20 people behind me and the girl's like, oh, would you like to save 20% on your, your purchase today? I'm like, yeah, I know it's a credit card offer. She's like, yeah, you, you know, take me two seconds. I'm like, yeah, go for it. Cause I knew I was going to get declined. Come to find out I get declined. I can't even get a Banana Republic credit card for the life of me. And I was like, man, this sucks. I got to figure out how to get better credit. Right. You know, like, this is killing me. I couldn't get a car. I couldn't, I couldn't do anything. Yeah. I didn't even have a credit card because I couldn't get it. So I was just like the same intensity that I went to like learn marketing. I was like, I got to figure this out. So read a bunch of books, learned from experts, like got my hands on everything I could to figure out how to repair my credit. So long story short, I ended up re- uh, uh, cleaning up my credit. It went from a five... 30 or something. I basically, within 37 days, raised my credit score 135 points. Wow. No joke, like for real. Um, I have all the documentation to do it. And so I was like, oh my God. And I remember Yannick Silver had a, a post and he said, you know, document it and profit from it. And so I was like, okay, like I did this whole process. I have all the documentation. You know, let me just share it with people what I did. Right. And turn it into an information product. And so just by the act of doing it and getting, fortunately, it was a good result, um, it turned into a great info product. And it was called 37 Days to Clean Credit. And it was a great little business. Mm. Um, and I learned a ton of just doing something, getting a good result from it, documenting it, and then profiting from it. Right, because there's and, a lot of people that want to get the same results. And that's if you can yeah. show them the way, I mean, that's extremely valuable for people. Um, yep. Yeah. And, and mind you, that's a big market, right? Yeah. Oh yeah. You know, internet marketing stuff. There's so many people creating so many different products. It's very, you know, uh, fickle. You know, things are changing. You know, and just it's you know it's a very interesting market. But credit, everyone has a credit score. Everyone has bad credit. Mm. So that market and that niche is not going away. Um, I ended up selling the business two or three years later after I started it, but it was for the most part, 100% on autopilot. Awesome. Um, and um, but, but it came from like, I had a problem, I figured it out, and I documented it, and I turned it into step-by-step training and how people can do it. Right, right, right. No, that's awesome. That's awesome. Now, do you have any books that you would recommend to someone who's like, who's intrigued by this and anything that you feel they're like, wow, yeah, I want to, you know, I want to hit the seven figure mark and I want to build some sort of automated business. Is there anything or they want to learn marketing? What, what would kind of your top couple of books be for them? I would say the best 
courses I ever went through was uh, Bob Serling's Million Dollar Licensing. Okay. Um, and that taught me how to do joint ventures, how to find hidden profit in businesses and in my own business mm-hmm. um, through scratch and dent sales, you know, like all, just, just mm. interesting ways to do it. Now, the cool thing with that is you don't have to have a business to do that. Um, you can literally step into in, uh, into that role and do that for businesses and take a percentage of the profit and the revenue generated. That was one thing I learned. Um, uh, the the other thing uh, is product launch formula, right? right. Launching any sort of in, internet inter- information product uh, is a must. I think. Um, uh, I think um, thirty seven signals rework. Um, I learned some a couple good nuggets from that. It's not like a hugely in depth learn how to marketing book, but one of the concepts they talk about. Um, and I'm just talking about my experiences, sure, right? Sure, sure. And kind of like where I'm connecting the dots with all these products. So one of the things uh, they talk about that is, you know, sell your byproducts, and uh, um, you know, that's from the the book Rework. And you know, the interesting thing is, you know, Henry Ford they had all this wood from building the Ford cars. Well, all this wood. Well, they didn't say, hey, you know, what are we going to do with all this wood? They ended up turning that into uh, Kingsford like a uh, charcoal company. <laughs> so they end up turning, you know, this extra wood, this useless wood into a charcoal company and hey, it turned out to be the most, you know, uh, profitable or biggest charcoal company in the world by just by selling those byproducts. That's awesome. So I came to the idea, I was like, man, you know, we built these really kick-ass campaigns with Call Loop uh using Infusionsoft um and uh will other people want it i mean in a way i could sell this byproduct and uh and that's where kind of killer campaigns came from so it's just a a connecting of the dots of all these different things that are out there and all the stuff that i've learned um it's just been a culmination of all these different things Uh, because everyone has information locked inside their head or some sort of expertise that uh or not right like maybe it's just like me i didn't know anything about credit right (laughs) Uh, mm-hmm. But hey, you know, a credit expert or whatever, not really. But, <laughs> well, no, but uh, yeah. I think that's a good place to come from is when you're not the expert. You know, you're just somebody that kind of reluctantly stumbled upon uh, this interesting way or strategy. Here's how I did it and here's how you can do it too. You know, mm. that always works well. Mm, mm, mm. Yeah, and again, I think what I, what I think about suggesting information marketing is a good place for people to cut their teeth or to be honest if you have a service business or even a product business attaching an info product to that can be one of the best forms of lead generation and generating a client list that you could imagine because the margins are phenomenal if you if you you know depending on the quality of what you're selling um, I mean if you think about oh well the CD only cost me a dollar to get made yeah but for someone if it's a credit report that could be worth a couple of hundred dollars to someone right so even though your cost of creating the product is only a few dollars the value that that can provide to someone if that you know they want to buy a house for their family you know and they've got a good job whatever it's just like what you they just made a couple uh, dumb mistakes or they just ne- were neglectful um, it doesn't necessarily mean right that they can't get back to where they want to go and that could be really really valuable to them and the beautiful thing about that is um, you can sell it and not make any profit on it but now you've got a buyer's list and that's something that's really 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 valuable to any any business I think this is a good point to just show the difference and a key tenant of good marketing is that most people think that they that they make a sale to get a uh, what is it they they get a customer to make a single sale but really you get a you make a uh, what is it you make a sale to get a customer and because a customer who buys something like if I if I have if I'm a plumber and I you know and I sell like do it yourself plumbing stuff those people who buy that that have get stuck and have questions those are going to be some of the best clients because they know value and appreciate my expertise and it'd be easier for me to get that book into the hands of somebody I can get that book or my training course on how to you know how to do it yourself quickly you know 10, 10 quick fixes that'll save you ten thousand you know thousands of dollars in you know in plumbing expenses if you sincerely try to help people that'll just create goodwill in the market it'll be almost like a loss leader you can use a generate a lead list of people that are you know involved in plus it'll lift your authority in the market you know i mean yeah. there's a lot to be said by hey i've got a book out my buddy ryan fletcher just you know quote unquote authored a book it's a really good book in the real estate space uh-huh. it's, it's self-published but guess what he is an author it's being yeah. sold on amazon yep. 
you know, what does that do to his marketplace? It lifts his authority. And obviously, Ryan's a writer. I don't like to write. Right. Um, but guess what? You could speak it. Yes. Uh, and so an example, like my mom's a real estate agent. But, you know, when you look at like the process of, you know, bringing on a client and actually getting a commission, it's a very long road and it's a lot of work. Mm -hmm. But along the way, you know, what do they need? Well, you need to, you know, you need to check their credit. Mm -hmm. Okay. There's probably some sort of affiliate program out there where you can, and there is, uh, where you can put people through uh, getting their credit and you can get paid on that, right? So right. regardless of whether they use your services, you know, they are using uh, outside services to get the things done that they need to get done to get the, the job done, right? Yeah. To get the property or whatever it is. And so, you know, it's been a way for my mom to supplement her income for people that don't follow through or don't use her services or don't get the listing or sell their home or whatever it is. Right. So, you know, in every business there, there is kind of these supplementary products and services that you don't have to own, but just as an affiliate, I mean, you could, you know, make, uh, make the commissions on that. Oh, exactly. Um, I think that's a great, great, great point. So supplement the income, establish yourself self as an expert. You know, you're looking to get a real, you're looking to buy some property and you're looking at three realtors and one of them has a course on how to buy and flip properties, right? Right off the bat, you just feel more comfortable with that person because, well, they're obviously, you know, they're teaching others how to make an income in this. You know what I mean? Like they've, it's just, it's more, almost more proof to the person. So, um, and again, it just, it builds that list. And then I know with internet marketing, a lot of people talk about the list, but even with the, most businesses, this is something I think is really important. Gary Halbert talked about this. He said, you know, if I were, if you were to start a burger, a burger joint of any kind, what would be the one thing that you would want that hungry would, crowd, man. right, right. A hungry crowd. <laughs> and people are like, I want lots of money. I want a fancy sign. No, no, no. I want a starving crowd. Cause you could start with a, you could start with a barbecue. You know, and you could start, you could even forget that. You've, you just even got coals and like you got coals on a, you know, in a garbage bin and you're making, you're making burgers, but you can reinvest the profits. If you had a large enough hungry crowd, you can just keep selling burgers and then reinvest. And now you got a barbecue and now you got a stall and now you got a location. Um, so that's what it is when we talk about building a list. It's trying to build that pool of people and then educate them on why you are an expert and then obviously um, solicit to them for the other services. And it's just help the people that need the help with what you're doing. And if they're not buying what you're selling, survey them and figure out the problems they are having and try and help them with those, right? Um, yeah. I don't know if we're overseeing. And services are hard to scale. Like I'll give you a good story. So uh, um, Sarah, she, she works in my office here. She has a, a company where they do event planning, and <clears throat> okay. she does a service, right? And so right. gets a client, does the whole thing, and then it's kind of like, shoot, I got to find another client to like pay my rent or whatever, you know, whatever it is. And so there's no sort of consistency with it, and you only have so much time mm -hmm. um, where she can devote to one or two, maybe three or four projects a month. If she's pulling her hair out, she has two kids, she's married, right? Like right. she has other priorities in her life. And so, you know, um, parts of her business are very frustrating. And, uh, and so I'm like, Sarah, I'm like, you know, I just explained to her the concept of services you cannot scale. Um, and you can't really scale that business unless you hire more employees, unless you, uh, you know, get more salespeople out there, unless you have other people uh, going out there and, you know, you, you're, to grow your business, you need more people, right. which means more costs. At the end of the day is, you know, bringing on more expenses going to make you more money and may, may not. Like what's the lifestyle that's, that's going to give you? And can you sell the business, yep. right? At the end of the day, you don't want to be doing this forever, or maybe you do want to be doing it forever, but you want some sort of exit. Like, can you build something within a couple of years or later in life, sell this, uh, sell this company. Right. It's kind of like if you're a doctor, you know, you go to Mr. Bernstein to get your teeth checked, um, but Mr. Bernstein gets out of the business. Um, I mean, maybe you'll go to that same doctor or dentist. Right. But you know, if he goes and sells his practice, he never gets top dollar for it. Yeah. You know, because he's really just selling the client list. Because everyone is, it's all relationship based. Right. Right. So you know, and the same thing with the service business. It's like, well, everyone knows you. Uh, and if it's not your business anymore, you're, you got to pass that relationship equity, that social equity you've built onto this new company. And that's a, a, the devalue, right? Mm -hmm. Like mm -hmm. there, it's not hard. It's not easy to do that. Yep. 
Yep. And when you have a product, you can scale it. So I'm like, Sarah, do an event. Put an event on. It's good. Number one, it'll make you an authority. You can put together the slides in 20 minutes. Um, and you know how to put an event together. So put an event to, do, to right. share with other people in the industry. You know, hey, your seven you know, biggest PR mistakes to avoid in 2015 or whatever. Right. And she'll get industry people. But now she's on stage. She's seen yep. as an expert. People are going to come out of the woodworks like, oh, my God, this is the best stuff ever. Can I hire you, right? But now you can increase your prices so you can only take on two or three clients a month. Um, but now you're weaning towards um, maybe part-time consulting, or you're creating an info product so you can scale it. Like yeah. you know, like getting away from the service-based stuff, but getting into um, using uh, your expertise and in, in documenting it right. and and turning it into a scalable business that you can profit from but right. you still have the the you know the the stuff that you love to do it's just now you have a way to because not everyone can use your services but they would love to buy your expertise right. because you've been doing it for 20 years you know yeah no that's that's exactly it and i think you know you can scale service businesses but i think you have to look more to a franchise model for that and at the same time not all of them are it's not necessarily a great like like you said it's not you might be able to scale it, but is that worth investing in? And, and I don't want to say no because you really can't. You know, I don't want to paint with with broad strokes, but I think there are a lot of instances where exactly exactly what you said is true. That it's just a pain in the butt to do it that way, and it's just a lot of overhead and a lot of expense when you could just do something easier than that. I remember I was managing 180 units, um, uh, like multifamily apartment buildings. So managing 180 units, and we had this guy that we would call to come clean our carpets. And I was in, you know, getting on this marketing kick. And I remember I was really into Joe Polish at the time. And he, you know, he, he, that's what he did. He helped revolutionize the carpet cleaning industry and that. And I remember talking to the guy and, you know, and, and I remember saying to him, it was just him and another guy in the truck. And I'm like, you know, you guys are really great. You're so professional. You do such awesome work. You ever thought of like, you know, hiring more people and, you know, talking to the owner. And he's like, you know what? He's like, I did that. He lived in Edmonton for, he said for six years, he said he had like five, he had five trucks and like 15 staff and all those things. He said, but I make more money now, just me and one guy. You know, yeah. just going around. Then I did less headaches. I, yeah, it's just, yeah. it's just, I, I sleep like I get more sleep. I just, and I make more money at the end of the day when everything's said and done. And I don't know if he'd gone through Joe's training, and you know, he might have been able to do a better way. But that's where you know, if you are going to go that route, you need to make sure. Uh, I brought this up on a couple of other calls, but you make sure you do the Lamborghini, the black Lamborghini test, which is if you want to go into an industry, take Lisa and event planning, and she decides that this is a service business she wants to try to scale. You need to do the black Lamborghini test, which means put everyone who does event planning on a table, all your competitors, all the people who do it as a service, and then eliminate anyone who can't realistically walk on a car lot and buy a black Lamborghini and not have the payments kill them. Um, and that'll eliminate 99% of the people on the table and then model those few who are left if there's anyone left. And if there's no one left, then that might tell you that this is, you know, this is a di you, you can do it. And a lot of us want to be pioneers, but oftentimes the easy money is just doing something that not don't be a me too, but doing something that's proven. And I think that that's something as well as entrepreneurs. We always want to create something new and, you know, and be, in, you know, industrial and revolutionary. But oftentimes if no one's selling anything, in that to that market, it might be because the people who have, you know, were, were kind of taken for everything they got because there's no one buying. Yeah. So, when I think even if you're like, oh, well, you know, there's other people in the market, oh, it's too crowded, you know, especially in the information world, you know, a lot of that comes down to like the personality. Like if people like you and they like what you stand for, mm -hmm. um, you know, that can be the difference between uh, you and the other guy. Like, you know, yeah. some people may like this person while other people like this person. And so it's just a connection between a lot of those people mm. and, uh, and finding what, what that connection is. Um, right, right, right. Chris, what was some of the best advice you've ever been given in your career? Uh, um, the best advice. Um, <laughs> Not to put you on the spot or anything. <laughs> That's a spot. tough question. The best advice. Um, uh, I, w I would say, you know, I mentioned it already, but, you know, it really brought to my attention uh, what to build. Um, it was build a business, right? Because uh, I was, you know, creating income, but there was no real business that I really wanted to 
to build. And so I think Rich Sheffrin, you know, uh, indirectly gave the advice of, you know, are you building an income or are you building a business? And so for me, that's been just kind of instrumental with, you know, the products I create or the things I get involved with, you know, is it, is it a fly by night thing? Cause I don't want to be a part of it. Um, you know, like you have the internet marketing world where there's churn more products and all this sort of stuff out. Um, but you know, they're going to move on to the next thing, right? Like they're not going to maybe build a real business around it. Some guys do, but you know, you see a lot of people just maybe build it for a cash infusion. Right. Um, so can you, what, what's, what separates? I mean, we kind of talked a little bit about like, obviously it's an income stream versus, uh, like a business, but like, what are some other signs? What's what's evidence that you have a business versus just an income stream? What what would be the evidence if I was a police officer, or detective? What would I be looking for to say that no, this is a business, not just an income stream? Yeah, I mean something that is independent on trends, right? Like if some if you have a product that's dependent on a trend changing or dying, mm. that is not a business, right? That's a that is a you're riding a trend. Um, you know, first of all, it's the market, right? Who's the market you're going after? Is it a brand new market? Is it a new market you're trying to create, which is a problem? Um, you know, so that's first and foremost. And then, yeah, you know, I think once you realize you have a business, is like you're growing, or you have return customers, or you have a product that people really need. Um, and so, I remember I first heard this from Todd Brown a couple of years ago, where he says, you know, you want to create a product that is a pain of disconnect. So, you know, uh, for example, like when we had these membership sites or had these recurring, you know, replicated websites, it was so deeply entrenched in the people's businesses because they put it on their business card and they put it on this. And, you know, so for them to cancel that, um, there's a serious pain associated with it. So it's like a Weber, like when your credit card fails and your entire business is dependent on your emails. Um, you're going to do whatever it takes, move mountains to make sure that that account is up to date. So the pain of disconnect with a service like that is massive. Um, and, uh, you know, the retention on that stuff is huge. So yeah. I would think, you know, how, what's the product that you can create, you know, that, that pain of, of disconnect. Now, obviously that is more software as a service side to it, but also, you know, what's the, the urgent pain that people need to solve um, and your product solves that, right? I think, you know, the credit repair, uh, people need to solve it because, hey, you know, I got to get a house in six months. Um, credit's a problem and I need to solve that, right? Mm -hmm. And so, you know, that was a problem. And I think Gary Bensavenga, he had a really good point. I remember listening to, and I still listen to it because it's just awesome, but it's the uh, Gary Bensavenga 100 seminar. Yeah. That's, yeah. And uh, it's awesome. Uh, there's so many good nuggets in there. And so one of the things he says is, you know, problems are markets. Uh, he says, you know, uh, you know, I don't get an Advil uh, unless I have a need or a want or a desire. Um, you know, you don't just pop an Advil because you want to. It's because you have a problem. And so, um, you know, if there's a problem, there is a solution that people are looking for. Uh, and that, i.e., there's an opportunity for something to be created or sold or marketed, um, you know, ethically to people that have that problem. So problems are markets. Mm, mm, mm. No, I love that. And that's actually where I learned that from was Gary Bensavenga in the 100 seminar. That's He's phenomenal. For people who don't know, he was he's the greatest living copywriter of our time. Uh, and copywriting is such a critical skill because copywriting um, – liberated the sales rep because prior to learning how to write Flipper. sales yeah like it, it's it's now you're able to scale it's learning Gary Bensavenga is a sale he's able to transfer salesmanship onto into the written word so well that his letters beat any other letters anyone else could create any other sort of package someone could create to mail to someone to make them want to buy Gary Bensavenga uh, who's retired now is the number one at it and um, anyways, yeah, that's a great resource, the Gary Bensavenga 100 seminar. I think that's – Yeah, that's and that gets into you know, for people that you know, copywriting, it's not copyrights, trademarks, patents or anything like that. And copywriting is you know, the art of writing persuasive copy, right? Sales copy, words in print. And uh, it's funny. I was, uh, Seth, who is in my office, literally sitting right next to me right now, uh, we were talking about the difference between direct response and image-based advertising. And so um, – 
you know, most companies are enamored by, oh, I got to have my logo right, and I got to right. have like, <laughs> you know, all this just bullshit that at the end of the day, you're a small business, you got to make money. So that thousand dollar ad you just bought for a page, you got to return some sort of investment on. So right. how are you going to do that? Well, that's where direct response comes in. And so, you know, uh, we were talking about uh, pest control and how you would enter into a neighborhood and all this sort of stuff. You know, most guys would maybe put like a real flashy postcard and this and that. I would write a letter, right? And the letter would be like, hey, I'm Chris. I'm actually local here. And you know what? I actually do pest control. And come to find out in your neighborhood, you know, there's all these uh, bee willards, you know, bees that fly around and they set these nests inside of your, your roof. Um, and actually, I found this in uh, your neighbor's house. Um, blah, blah, blah. I mean, obviously, tell the truth, right? I'm just kind of, right, of spinning the tongue here. But um, but I would just, I would write a letter yeah. and, uh, you know, like, just be as genuine, as human as possible. I think, you know, getting away from sales, because once you have flashy stuff, that means selling. And yeah. people don't like to be sold to, but they sure love to buy. Yeah. And they sure love to buy from people that they really like, they know, yeah. and they trust. Right, right. So and Stories are a great way to get to know someone. Um, yeah, no, that's awesome. That's a great tip. Uh, anyone that's not well-versed in copywriting that should really – even the process you go through – because if you're going to write down a letter like that, you have to think about who you're writing the letter to. And that process is just a great business-building skill in itself. Um, which is again, it comes back to what makes copywriting so valuable. I actually got I've met Gary a couple of times. Um, we're we're actually friends now. I'm able to reach out and ask him questions, which is just it's, damn it's such a blessing. lucky I you. I know, I know. <laughs> but again, it comes back to you're the average of the five people you spend the most time with. I'm going to try and get him on one of these interviews. So um, he's only ever Kim McCarthy, one of my mentors, is one of the only people that have. Uh, I think it's the only interview he's ever done outside of his wow. System 100 seminar. So it was with Ken, and then anyways, but. Chris, um, thank you for your time today. What are you working on now? What's what kind of stuff you got? Like you excited by? What do you, what's what's fueling your passion these days? Yeah, so you know, just just growing Call Loop, um, and uh, we have a new kind of project in the works, and it just you know it's been a product that we've had out for a couple of years. Uh, it's called Auto Teleseminar, but um, basically allows you to automate conference calls, so you could automate your marketing and selling. Um, and we kind of transition that into kind of a, um, uh, a conference called Platform. So, and it's called kickaconference.com, uh, K I C K A conference.com. And, uh, yeah, so we're just, we're, we're building that a new, cool, awesome conference called Platform that will just allow you to uh, generate sales from, from conference calls. I think a lot of people do webinars, but <clears throat> in my experience, webinars take a lot of time and preparation to, get right and um, you know conference calls and teleseminars can be a very simple fast way to do it um, so yeah so we're working on that you know call loop uh, is obviously the, the main business but kick a conference kind of the new thing and um, yeah and that's about it that's awesome yeah so if anyone wants to check any of those out it's call loop c-a-l-l-l-o-o-p dot com and then we have kick a conference so k-i-c-k-a uh, conference C O N F R E N C E and is that kickaconference dot com? It is. Okay, yeah, kickaconference dot com. Um, Chris, thank you so much for joining us today. Um, I really do value and appreciate you as a peer, as a mentor, as a friend, and um, I think we gave some great, great content today. Anyone who's listening to this, even if you have an existing business, if if you've got a seven figure business, there's go back because. I guarantee that there's dreams in here if you just think about it and you're willing to be, you know, think about being a newbie and look at it with fresh eyes. I know sometimes we get so close to our projects. If you try and look at it from another perspective and just listen to this call, there's going to be a gem in it for you because we covered some awesome, awesome stuff. And um, thank you, Chris. I really appreciate what you shared with us today. Yeah, man. Thanks for uh, inviting me. It's been uh, it's been a lot of fun. So yeah, good, good. You've reached the end of our interview. Now first, let me thank you for listening. I appreciate and respect you more than you'll ever know. And now I'd like to ask you a couple of questions. First, what three lessons did you just learn? What three aha moments just jumped out at you? Second, what can you implement for yourself and your business in the next 24 hours? Third, what can you give to someone else to help you with or give them to just do it for you. 
Whatever it is, remember taking action is the secret sauce to results. Now, if you think this interview would be helpful for a friend, please give them a link to it. It'll help them and it'll help me too. I'd also like to invite you to help me find out more about the challenges you're facing, your dreams, your goals, and how I can help you overcome what's holding you back. We both do better when we know better, and your success is my success. So please reach out and interact. You can visit our website, bestbusinesscoach.ca for Canada or California, where I'm from and where I'm living. Uh, You're welcome to also try out one of our paid programs. You can find us on YouTube, Facebook, and pretty much every other social media channel you can think of. You should also subscribe to the podcast. And if you're enjoying them, please leave us a nice review. It really helps. That's all for now. Once again, thank you. Take care of yourself. And remember, the world needs the best business you can build. And I believe in you.